My name is Sal Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today I would like to discuss the hostage deal between Hamas and Israel. Israeli advocates of an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as part of a hostage deal with Hamas prefer the following arguments in favor of an agreement. All these arguments are nonsensical and false. False argument number one, the return of the remaining hostages, many of them as corpses, will restore trust in the shattered covenant between the citizens of Israel and its government and military. The truth, nothing will ever revive the citizenry's confidence in the bloated, self-enriching, glorified militia which the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, has become over the past few decades. The Air Force may be the only exception. Israel's armed forces, Israel's intelligence community are capable of spectacular one-offs and of the slaughter of civilians, but they are inferior. They are not up to the systemic military threats that the state of Israel is currently faced with on all fronts. The army and intelligence services have committed too many errors on the, in the run-up to October 7th. Immersed in hubris and hedonism, craven delusions and misconceptions, exorbitant pay and pensions, and sheer stupidity among the largely political appointments, the IDF, Mossad, Shin Bet, and the entire alphabet soup are now corrupted and dilapidated to the point of all-pervasive dysfunction. In other words, they are all useless. Faced with an existential threat akin to the annihil annihilation in the Holocaust, many Israelis now are looking for a way out of their failed state. Those who can emigrate, those who cannot emigrate, try to do so all the same. Furthermore, the internecine fault lines within the counterfactual fiction known as Israeli society, these fault lines have irrevocably erupted. The genie cannot be put back into the consensus and status quo bottles. It is a question of time before Israel disintegrates into a terminal civil war. False argument number two, a hostage come ceasefire deal with Hamas is likely to prevent a regional war with Iran and its proxies. And what is the truth? The truth is that both Hezbollah and Iran are now compelled to settle open scores, open accounts with Israel, regardless of any developments in Gaza. A regional war is inevitable, though it might be low intensity and asymmetrical for a while. Once a ceasefire is implemented in Gaza, Hezbollah and Iran will attack an economically enfeebled and bleeding Israel. They will initiate the second phase of their attempt to eradicate the Jewish state. False argument number three, Hamas is effectively defeated. No need to proceed with war. Israel's aims have been accomplished. Nothing can be further from the truth. Hamas have won this war decisively in every possible dimension of it. Even militarily, Hamas is far from diminished. Israel has killed by its own estimate 17,000 Hamas terrorists and their commanders. These are easily replaced in a population even more hateful and embittered by Israel's indiscriminate counterattack. Iran is ready to replenish Hamas munitions and only one third of the tunnels within Gaza and between Gaza and Egypt have been destroyed. And many of these tunnels can be re-excavated within months. It would take Hamas no longer than one year to regain its posture prior to October 7th. Hamas is the future of the Palestinians, its hero credentials burnished. False argument number four. Should Hamas violate the ceasefire agreement by moving armed fighters to the northern Gaza Strip, 
or by smuggling mat material from Egypt under the Philadelphia Corridor, Israel could easily resume military operations to counter these emerging threats. The truth? No one, especially not the United States, will allow Israel to restart the war in Gaza. This ostensible option is utterly delusional. Moreover, Israel will be preoccupied with international pressures, including arrest warrants against its leaders by the ICC. Israel will be preoccupied with the war against Iran and Hezbollah. But you could ask, why do I mince words? Why do I call these false arguments? Why don't I call these false arguments lies? Because many Israelis ferv fervently believe in these arguments. In psychology, we call this a fantasy defense against a cognitive dissonance in an unbearable reality. It is a psychopathology which has been typical of both sides to this protracted conflict. The refusal to inhabit reality has led everyone in this benighted region into a surreal nightmare from which there is no awakening.